Sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like Oh, welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Andrew David Blake Newbar's High Performance Call, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern time. We're doing every day this week. Um, next week, we will open up a spot to do some of the videos we've talked about before, and I'll talk more about them later on, but not this week, next week, this week's just kind of busy. So appreciate you guys being on. I know some of you guys are new. Some of you have been here for a while. I want to take just a couple minutes today, talk about a book I was listening to. I've mentioned previously, guys, a great way to kind of get kind of cliff notes versions, whether audible or, um, you know, shortened uh, shortened information is this app right here is called Headway. Looks like this. Um, it's got a bunch of different books. The books are, if you listen to them, they're anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. If you read them, they're, they're a short read. They're real cool. Um, but a great way to kind of get some you know pieces of books in if you don't have time to read a full book. I know a lot of people... You know, if you if there's a little too much ADHD going on or you just struggle <laughs> to get the time, but you want to make sure you get some information in, those are great books to read. OK, or a great way to do it is through that app. So anyway, I was on there yesterday and on Headway, I was listening to a book called Limitless. Has anyone heard of a gentleman named yeah. Jim Quick? Mm -hmm. Jim Quick. So it's K-W-I-K. Jim Quick is a very cool guy. Um, yeah. You can find him on, on Facebook, on Instagram. He is um, super positive. So something happened as a child. I want to say there was an accident. I can't remember exactly because I was listening to the book at one and a half speed while I was running. So I'm, I apologize for that lack of information. But something happened as a kid and he had a brain injury. And due to this brain injury, as a kid growing up, he was kind of known as um, he may have done some stuff with Mind Valley. I'm not sure, Cynthia. Uh, a lot of people, Mind Valley is. Oh, where's my book? I've got the a book from the author of Mind Valley. I'll have to find it. Anyway, um, so Jim's done a lot of training. As a kid, he fell, he hurt his head, um, and he was known by a lot of his friends and even some of his teachers as the child with the broken brain. Right, kid with a broken brain. That's how he he grew up with that as a, a nickname. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. that's a kid with a broken brain. Now, some of you guys may have had other names, right? Kids can be mean. Sometimes parents or adults grab a hold of certain nicknames. They don't understand where they come from, and it just kind of becomes part of who you are. Now he is a memory expert. But see, he wasn't that way for a long time. He struggled to learn. It wasn't just ADHD. He really struggled with learning. He was called the kid with the broken brain. And it wasn't until he was a little bit older. He was at a friend's house. And the friend's dad offered him a book, on some books on personal development. And he started reading those books on personal development. And over time, um, he came to recognize what he was capable of. He started pushing himself more and more and more. And over time, his comprehension grew because he was practicing it and more and more until finally, yeah, now he is recognized as a memory and a brain power expert. He talks about speed reading. He talks about comprehension. He talks about gathering all of this information. Total 180 from how he was known. So his book, Limitless, is kind of about that. There's a couple of key points I just want to dive into and i'm gonna challenge you guys to read it it's not a real long book you can find it on headway if you want to get just the shorter version but so limitless he talks about three key elements you guys see my screen give me a nod yes thumbs up yep okay good yes mindset motivation and methods the what the why and the how here's something i say all the time jim says it here but i want you guys to know this look you all have vast potential untapped levels of strength, intelligence, focus, the key to activating these superpowers is unlimiting yourself. Most of the things, most of the reasons you haven't gotten to that next level are simply the barriers that you have in your life. Gay Hendricks calls them the hidden barriers. Here he's talking about the limits that you've created. We also have our upper limit problems. It could be all sorts of different things, whatever we want to call it. Guys, most of the reason you haven't been able to do it is because of the barriers you created. 
not anything else. Most of it, you have that control over. And a lot of you guys, I mean, the, the honest truth, whether you want to believe it or not, you're scared of the amount of strength and intelligence and focus you have, because if you were actually to finally break through and do something significant, well, then damn it, people are going to expect that from you all. And I'm so used to falling short of expectations. What's going to happen when I actually live up to them? Guys, no matter where you come from, no matter what challenges you face, you have incredible potential that's just waiting to be tapped. Every person, regardless of age, background, education, gender, personal history, can advance beyond what they believe they deserve and is possible. Now, we live in a very diverse world, and I fully recognize that. And I also recognize that, you know, I am, you know, I, I feel like I'm an interesting mix. I was born in a very, very poor neighborhood but then moved to a city where everybody looked like me. And then I spent years in Brazil and then my kids are, you know, half Brazilian. I speak Portuguese and Spanish. I've had a, the privilege of working with people everywhere in the world, everywhere that you can think of. I've had a chance to work with people from poor neighborhoods in the U S to poor neighborhoods in, in central and South America to Asia, to people that have generated, you know, nine figures. I've had a chance to meet people everywhere and work with people of all sorts. And I think one of the most common things that I have learned is that none of those other factors ultimately determine who you can become. They may determine where you start. They may have a factor to say in, in what you have to overcome. They may, it may factor into the fact that some people are gonna start a step or two behind others. But what's inside of you, ultimately, when you start to break through those chains and those limits that are there, when whatever that core is that's wrapped around your potential starts to crack because you force it through, that's when you become limitless. And that's ultimately what Jim is talking about in this book, is if you want to become limitless, it's not that you're going to turn into this godlike entity, what it is, is you break the limits that you've placed yourself here. And if I've broken the limit once, then damn it, I can do it again and again and again. So it doesn't matter if society put a limit on me. Oftentimes, it's the ones that I put on myself, right? So here we go. Here's a couple of the three self-imposed limits that he talks about, Okay. So number one is the element. So this is the mindset. This is the what. Your beliefs, your assumptions, your attitudes are never pre-installed at birth. So they don't exist just to exist. You pick them up as you've gone along and more than likely they are a lie. And I love this. He just talked about limited idea entertained. So a lie is sim simply the idea of limits that you entertain in your own life. What do you think about that? You ever thought about that as far as a lie goes? How many lies have you told yourself? Well, I would do this, but I would like to do this, but looking at them, looking at that, like we were talking about yesterday with average. Stop trying to be average. Stop telling yourself those lies. So that's the what? The mindset. So we have to first understand where the beliefs, assumptions, and attitudes are, where they come from recognize them, and then figure out what we need to do to change them. Next comes the motivation, the why. Here's the thing about motivation, guys. It is not something you are inherently born with. Again, just like mindset, it is not something that happens without any kind of work. It is something that you are able to work for every single day. You will wake up and you need to kind of create a little bit of that motivation and keep yourself moving forward. Now, he talks about here, you can create the personal motivation every day by following those simple recipe. Motivation equals your purpose, the energy that you put in, and then S3 stands for small, simple steps. Small, simple steps. By small and simple things are great things brought to pass, ladies and gentlemen, not anything huge. It's a quote from James Lawrence, Iron Cowboy, when he said, you know, that, um, you know, the ability to handle the day-to-day -day monotony of everyday life is an underappreciated superpower. Being able to deal with the little steps every single day, keeping yourself moving forward. Do that every day. You'll stay in the state of flow. And we've talked about that with momentum. Momentum is a state that you can create. Got some comments here. 
All right. Next, element number three, the how. So how do we change it? Procedures and processes, which will help your brain excel. So you learn the methods to focus, study, memorize, undertake, and think. Focus. These are the key elements here. These key five here, guys. Focus. Study. Memorize. Undertake. Speed reading. But maybe reading is the better one here. Reading and think. So we need systems and procedures for that. You need to learn methods on it. Everybody got that? Focus, study, memorize, read, and think. Now, we're coming up. You know, there's a reason I keep doing these challenges, and I've talked about it. Um, we're coming up on the new year. This is the time people start setting resolutions. They start setting goals. Resolutions suck, and they're not effective. Goals can be effective if you give yourself a system to achieve them. Some of you guys, this next year, because you've undertaken to fulfill some of these challenges as much as possible, and I understand you'll miss a day here and there, but you're actively doing it with the gratitude, the physical aspect, building your business, posting on your social media, all of these different things. Some of you guys are actively participating in an effort to improve yourself every single day. By now, some of you are starting to create small systems or methods, little triggers throughout your day to help you think like, oh, now's a good time to take some extra steps, to drink a little more water, to do some push-ups. Now's when I've got to read. You figured out that you can't read as much during the middle of the day because too much is going on. So the morning or the night, right? You start to figure things out. You're starting to create systems. Resolutions don't work because they're not attached to a system or a process. Now, I could give you some, and, and so, you know, this week, maybe I'll share with you some of the things that Jim Quick talks about. You know, we talk about the miracle morning for entrepreneurs. There's the savers method that T. Harv Ecker talk, or T. Harv is Secrets of Familiar Mind, Hal Elrod talks about. T. Harv has different programs and ways to rewrite your blueprints. There's a lot of systems that are out there, guys. They don't all work for everyone. Okay. They just don't because the way that Karen thinks is going to be different than Dennis. The way Patricia thinks and acts is going to be different than Mike. You guys got to figure out what works for you. So be willing to experiment. Guess what experimentation entails? Occasionally it entails failure. <laughs> Things don't always go right. And sometimes you fall on your face. Keep pushing forward anyway till you find something that works. For me, reading, for example, is something that I do like I do all the time, occasionally, often. One of the things uh, Richard Branson, when I got a chance to hear him speak, he said, you know, one of the biggest differences in the successful people and those that don't is successful people fail more frequently and they fail faster because they understand it's part of the process. You're going to find something that works, right? What did Thomas Edison say? He didn't, he didn't fail that many times when he was creating the light bulb. He failed. He found over 10,000 ways that it didn't work until he found the one that did. Right? You need to find what works for you. So try the savers method with Miracle Morning. Try Brennan Burchard talks about time blocking. I've done trainings on that, right? High performance habits. Brennan talks about that. I want to say, Chantel, I don't know if he teaches it in that book. He teaches some elements, but he does have a memory course. I'm not trying to sell any of his courses, but he's got some stuff, right? Um, what he proved there was not so much that there were no failures, but that those they were learning opportunities, right? My first business online, my first website, I don't look at it as a failure. I look at it as something that helped me learn. It put me in a position to get connected with my mentor to do other things, right? Yeah, Forrest, exactly. It, but it's taking those moments to learn. Failure really only happens when you quit, guys. But what you need to do is learn what works for you. And you learn that by pushing forward. Now, it doesn't mean like I tried for a couple of days and I quit on it. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. 
to find a system that works for you, you need to push through it. And sometimes you need to do it for weeks to figure it out. Even if it doesn't work in the very, very end, it'll make you more effective in one way. You'll be better than you are now. Any kind of system is going to be better than nothing. Can we all agree on that? Right? Yeah. Just floating through life. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work. But I'm better than I was. So, Jim Quick, Limitless. Go pick it up. Read it. Would love to hear some thoughts on it. Um, but push yourselves a little bit, guys. I'll share some of these slides. I'll drop them into the uh, Skype group a little bit later on. And as always, go out, rise up, rise from the ashes, fly like the phoenixes you are. Have an amazing day. I'm going to stay on and do a little bit of Q&A. I think uh, it, uh, sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are.